Mana from China. A quick unbagging. I did an order recently with, um, God, was it IC Station or Banggood? I think it was Banggood. Um, I kind of like Banggood. They, uh, got all kinds of odd stuff. Including clothing and, uh, I bought a real nice bag there, like a camera bag, used for a camera bag or a bike bag. Anyway, I made quite a big order, so this is probably just the first part of it. Huh. Let's see, let's see. I should have made a whole, a whole video on this, but, uh. I'm going to do it in parts because I can't wait. i got to open it up now. Well, this is most of my order, it looks like. Usually they break it up to a million little pieces. Okay, I bought a little USB power thing. Everybody's got their USB power voltage and current uh, meter thing. And I bought a few modules. What are these? What were these? Oh, this is just a voltmeter. I bought a couple of power amp modules. And uh, those are 100 watters. I was thinking if I get stuck with my Tiger, I could uh, temporarily put that in. And use the power supply and wiring and chassis and all. Uh, or I've had an odd idea of making buy amps out of them or some crazy deal too, I don't know. Just playing around. But, uh, or, I, you know, I'll probably just make an amp of its own. Not necessarily 100 watts per channel, but whatever I can find for a transformer. I already opened up one package. These little fans I bought uh, help keep my Bob Relay, Electronic Relay is a little cooler. They're fine for winter, but I'm worried in the summer it's going to get too hot. Uh, the whole console gets really hot now, but being polar as it is, it's not a problem. And I know those relays run hot, and that's going to be a... constant thing on a heavy load like that. Which is probably why I'm not going to go for a second relay like I was thinking. Ah, and these I bought for the shower to help my, uh, keep my shower hose from laying on the ground. Bang. Good. Stuff. And the alligator, can never run for those. And a carbon monoxide detector. It's very inexpensive. It's got a digital readout. It's small. Let's we'll see how it works. I've got a wood stove up north, so it kind of makes sense to have one around. Bug. Almost filled. I have a big hole in it. And this, I believe, is going to be a little voltmeter. Yep. I bought an analog voltmeter. Sometimes I like an analog, sometimes. It reacts differently to mixed signals. Some of you can see visually in the corner of your eye is why I really like it. With the digital one, I have to have it real near where I, I'm working. This I can have off to the side, out of my way, and I can still catch it in my peripheral vision. Cool. It has sort of a brand pros kit. Supposedly has uh, approvals, CE, no you will. 
Um, it's not a meter for you know industry or anything like that. It's strictly another handyman and home type meter. Comes with some Mitsubishi batteries. The probes that come with it look pretty good. Uh, got the little caps on the ends. We're working those later, I guess. Oh, that's, that's right. And you got caps on these ends, too. Don't come through the tip at all. They're just dead end caps. Look pretty good, though. Pretty sturdy. Pretty sharp. It's got the kind of rubbery uh, sides. Might help it a little bit better than the brittle plastic on the Radio Shack one. It's basically almost the same meter, though. Otherwise, um, it has separate things for the batteries, which is kind of a safety thing. So there's some ideas for safety in this. So it's not like a something you'll be giving to an electrician or anything. So this battery door comes off with a little latch. You turn 90 degrees, 180 degrees, I guess. This one has a screw in it for the 9 volt compartment. That way, actually. Both of them have a little uh, let uh, foot or prop or whatever. So this will be for a taller, this bottom one, give you a nice, uh, mostly upright, where this one will be mostly just a little bit off the bottom. So I've got it at a slight tilt, or you can do the heavier tilt. This heavier, bigger tilt is kind of a. Uh, we'll have to see how that holds up or not. Yeah, pretty good. So when you're putting it back in, though, it feels like you're going to snap it. But the camera, this is probably the best one. That's kind of an odd deal. You gotta got it sit right in the little groove there, just right. Switch is decent. Lost my prop rod. Um, I checked out a couple of the ohms already. One complaint I saw was about zeroing the ohms, but I haven't had any trouble. It seems to be pretty smooth. You do have to zero it from range to range, which on a really good beater you probably wouldn't have to do so much. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I'll come back on a, later if I find any accuracy problems. I presume it's just going to work like a regular VOM. You know, the downer is uh, the 20 kilovolts uh, per volt input impedance on a meter like this. It, my only critique of this meter is, you know, why not go the extra step and make it a FET meter for almost no more cost. The manual isn't totally useless. It's uh, somewhat substantial. It's uh, not all perfect English in there, you know. It's, the back half is in Chinese, but the Chinglish isn't too bad. It's Mostly comprehensible. Good response on that. And that's about the speed of the needle. And like any meter of this type, when you put it on off, it uh, puts a short across the movement. So the needle doesn't move as much when it's jerked around in transit. This is the meter on the Banggood site. Usual Banggood stuff. Not a whole lot of information here. Does come with a pretty good manual. Well, decent manual. A little bit of chinglish in there. Probes are pretty good, as I mentioned in the review. 
Safety standard, I guess. All the features here. There's the blow up. 